friends, it's Nicole from the Loved and Listened To channel, and I am back again with another Mental Health Monday video. And this is the series where I talk about something that affects our mental health and how I am personally, or what I've researched, how I am meeting the challenge. <laughs> so last week, or in my last video, I should say, I talked about like how to know when to let a friendship go, when to just be like, you know, this is no longer a good match for the season of my life that I am in. So I am going to either uh, take a step back from this relationship or just totally not be in this relationship anymore. And so towards the end of that video, I said that I would maybe make another video talking about um, how my life has positively changed since I began really taking a close look at some of my own relationships, taking a step back from those relationships, and just, you know, focusing on new and what's good for me right now. And so I am going to title this video, I have my notes here, I am going to title this video, How It Feels to Mind Your Own Business, because that is what I feel like I have done. I have learned how to better mind my own business, the business of me and my personal growth and what I want to learn in life and what I want to experience and have in life when it comes to interpersonal relationships. And in the past, I was not minding my own business. <laughs> I was very focused on being a quote unquote good friend to other people, um, doing what I thought made a good friend. So if you talk to some of the people that I have been in friendships with, hopefully they would say I'm a good friend, no matter the the status of our current relationship. But I just want to reiterate, like I did in the last video, I want to reiterate that these are things coming from my own personal perspective. So I was spending a lot of time and a lot of energy on doing things in relationships that I thought made me a good friend. And so, yeah, no, it's now I just mind my own business. I give back what I receive. I am much more, it, it's more balanced. And I'm gonna tell you how it feels to be at this point in my journey. <laughs> so I have five things written down here that I wanted to talk about. And just to tell you how it feels now to mind my own business. So let's start with number one. So the first one is less worrying and stress about other people. So a few of the people that I was formerly more involved in their lives, I was friends with, I was more involved in their lives. Um, they had a lot of like their own stuff going on. And for people who are really empathetic or if you're trying to be a good friend, if you are friends with a person who has a lot of things going on in their lives that negatively affect their mental health or that negatively affect your friendship or that are just like a lot of drama, trauma and stuff going on over and over again and if you're trying to be their friend and you're like really for real trying to be a good friend, then it just, you're going to worry about them. Like you care about a person, you are going to worry about them. But now that I mind my own business, I got first, I got to this point by realizing that, you know, nothing that I can do is going to make this person interact in this situation in a way that will be less stressful for them or more healthy for them. And I'm not the person to judge like 
how people run their lives, but there are some things that are really obvious that a person can be doing that is inviting drama into their lives or they're not taking care of their physical body or their wellness at all. They may be over consuming um, drugs or alcohol or things like that. So there are some things that people are that people can very black and white obviously do that negatively affect them. And so I had to come to the realization, the the point in my journey or whatever, to understand that hey, you know, it doesn't. I cannot love them out of doing this thing that is harmful to them. And so the only thing that I can do in this situation is take a step back and really just mind my own business as best as I can. So with doing that, as you can probably imagine, I am now much less stressed out because I have no idea what's going on in um, you know, other people's lives for the most part. And I don't, so one of the things that I used to do a lot that I always wished was reciprocated back to me was to just check on folks. And I grew up with people who did this and apparently a lot of people didn't, but like the people in my family would, they would just check on folks. Like my grandma would call people and say, hey honey, just checking on you, haven't heard from you in a while. Or my mother would, you know, hey, how you doing? I was, you were on my mind or something like that. So I, I grew up with like very empathetic women. And I, despite my own, my own judgment about myself sometimes, I am definitely, you know, an empathetic, like a woman who is like interested in what's going on in your life. And I think that that makes me a good friend because that is what I would want. I would love <laughs> for someone to do the just checking on you thing um, like I have done for so many people over my life and just not received the energy back, like almost ever. You know, I stopped doing that. I When I get that urge, I now take some time to do something nice for myself or I might journal or you know what I'll do? I'll just check in with myself. I just redirect that energy and because that's very loving and nice energy to just have someone that maybe you haven't talked to in a couple of days or maybe they know something that's going on with you and they just check on you because they care about you. They think enough of you to check on you. So if you are like me and you are expending that energy out towards other people to just check on them and to care about them, the way to get yourself to stop doing that is like, don't call somebody and say, you didn't check on me, so I'm gonna stop checking on you and that's how it's gonna be. Don't do that, because that's negative and that's foolishness. And if you wanna maintain the relationship in the future, which, you know, maybe you do, don't do that. Don't do that. Just stop doing it. You don't have to throw a Macy's parade every, or post on Facebook every time you're changing your behaviors. Just change the behavior. That's all you got to do. So I would just suggest if you're looking for like a how to mind your business, the next time you get the urge to check on that friend who you know is not going to ever reciprocate that energy, just Check on yourself instead. Ask, your, ask yourself, how are you doing? How are you feeling? Journal about it. Take yourself for a nice walk. Or if you take yourself out for some fried catfish, which is honestly my favorite thing to do. So that's number one. Number two. So as you can probably imagine, <laughs> without um, spending you know, time and energy, listening to other people's problems, like the kind of problems that you know that they are just going to continue to participate in. Um, without all of those kind of interactions, guess what I have? More time. And so I have used the time that I have to mind my business and I redirect that energy and that time to 
more creative endeavors like making the YouTube videos, keeping up with my blog. I've also written a guided journal that you can buy in the link down below um, for Mother's Day or a gift for your, for your mom. I, I, I feel like I have so much more mental energy and clarity because I'm no longer so emotionally involved in other people's lives. And I'm not telling you to just not, not care about other people, but I am telling you to think about those relationships that may be vastly um, unequal, vastly not reciprocated. Those you can you can take that energy back and put it in your own cup or put it on the scale that is good for you. And I think that if you were in a situation like me, you'll start to feel better and you'll start to feel lighter in your, in your mind and your heart. And you can use that energy to just do whatever the hell else kind of stuff you wanna do that is more beneficial for you in your journey. So that's number two. All right. Number three, getting to see who really cares for you the same way that you've cared for them. So once you start to kind of take a step back from being the person who always reaches out first or the person who is checking on the the friends or whatever, once you take yourself out of that role, it's almost like I don't want to call it a motherly role, but maybe that's what it is. I don't know. I'm not a mother, but it kind of feels like that energy of like giving, giving, giving and not expecting anything back. But, you know, these people are not your actual children. So it is normal and I think healthy to expect that your interpersonal relationships, um, these ones at least, right, would would be giving, you give and you receive, you know, it would be a reciprocal relationship. So when you take a step back from being the giver, you get to see like, oh, do these people, you get to give yourself proof. If you're watching this video and resonating, you already know, but you get to give yourself additional proof that the relationship is one-sided and you can then go about changing your own behavior in order to make a new experience for yourself. That's, you know, that's it. Like I said, I would not personally suggest making like a big announcement of like, I'm not going to call you every week anymore because once you start talking, it's going to be weird anyway. But you know what? If the person that you're in this situation with, if they notice that you haven't checked on them in a while, maybe they will say, hey, I was just checking on you, haven't heard from you in a while. And you might get to see that maybe your perception of the relationship was a little skewed. There could be something else going on in the relationship under the surface that was making you feel like your needs were not being met. You can really, you know, start to kind of dig down and fill out what is going, you know, what's going on. But you have to change your own behavior first. You have to make a change in the situation first before you can before you can do that. So regardless of what happens in you know in your situation, think about it as okay, this is just good and new information that I can use in this relationship. My therapist would say, you know, don't attach any like overly dramatic emotions to it, too much emotion to what is going on in this. Just observe the behavior, observe how you feel, and just say, this is new information. That's it. That's it. And you can use the information to behave in a different way. You can use the information to analyze how you're feeling and to build some self-awareness. But information is not like the end of the world or necessarily the end of your relationship. 
you just use it to adjust. It's okay. <sighs> okay, and I think I just accidentally explained number four. Ugh. So number four is practicing being aware of my own behavior in relationships. So I'll just lightly reiterate what I just said. So taking a step back from relationships that were, you know, not reciprocal for me and starting to mind my own business, it is a good practice to see like, oh, why? have I been devoting so much energy into this relationship? In my case, a couple of the relationships that I, you know, been thinking about and been going through with this, in my case, I had kind of like a, oh, I can help this person. I can, you, I don't, I don't know this, if it's called the God complex, but I really was like, oh, I can understand this person and I can really help them and I understand why they're behaving this way or I have interacted with people who behave this way and I can, if I am just a good enough friend to them, I can show them that they are amazing and I can help them. You know, that is what was going on in my mind. And none of that is true years of being what I thought was a good friend to this person, it didn't change anything. <laughs> it changed zero percent of what they were doing. And it's not my place to try to affect another person's journey like that anyway. I can be a good friend, but it's not my place to take on that kind of like, ooh, you know, that kind of thing. It's just not my place to do that. It's not my place to think that like, I am the person that can help this person or I am the person who needs to um, influence this person so they can make their lives better. It's not my job to to judge like all the things that you know this person that is choosing to do it is my job as a friend in my opinion to offer you know a reasonable amount of support i don't believe in offering like support to the level where the person is being enabled to keep doing their bad behavior they're you know harmful we won't say bad harmful behavior. I don't believe in sacrificing. I no longer, this is a new thought for me, but I no longer believe in sacrificing yourself in order to help other people and things like that. Um, I'm not Jesus, I'm not God and not the creator, none of that. So it's, not, it's not my place to do that. And so now that I have stopped doing that, I can, I, I definitely now have more time to practice my own self-awareness and to grow within myself to better understand more of like, well, why was I participating in this situation like this anyway? Why was I participating in this situation for so long? I now have time to ask myself the questions that I need to answer for myself to help prevent me from continuing to participate or even subconsciously seek other relationships like that, that will not be equal or reciprocal or fulfilling for me. So that is, I should have maybe started <laughs> with that one because by far the opportunity to, the opportunity and the space that I have now to delve deeper into my own self-awareness and to my, into my own reasons for my own behavior. Absolutely. The best thing about learning to mind my own business, learning to, you know, get deeper into my, into my own behaviors. It's just, that is the stuff that changes your life. 
when you are practicing your own self-awareness, when you have stopped blaming other people and thinking other people are horrible because they're not acting the way that you want them to or you expect them to, or maybe they're even acting in ways that are like clearly harmful to them. But you know what? You have no control over what other people are going to do and what they're going through and what their path is and, you know, what they are here in this life to learn. Not only do you don't you don't have any control over it and you also don't know what what it is. They might not know what it is. So it's not your it's just not your place to to participate in relationships in that way. But it is your place to increase your own self-awareness and examine how and the why and answer all those questions about, you know, why you were participating in the relationship in their way in the first place. Okay, last one. So the last one is I now have time to establish what I want in friendships and other interpersonal relationships going forward. So related to um, becoming more self-aware, one of the biggest, or I don't know if I should say the biggest things, but one of the nicest things about becoming more self-aware of my own behavior and deep and figuring out why I was behaving in certain ways it's so nice to have that because now when I meet new people or when I am communicating my needs or my boundaries, I can now navigate those situations with so much more ease and so much less stress. In the past, when I, for example, would like meet a guy who seemed nice enough or, you know, or whatever. But in my gut, I knew that it wasn't a good match or perhaps I saw some red flags <laughs> in this situation early on. I didn't always have the level of self-awareness that I needed to be able to say, mm, no, I am noticing something here and this is not okay for me. So it takes a certain level of strength and self-awareness to be able to do that. And I did not always um, have that in the past. But now, you know, when I meet someone, I don't immediately judge people, but I can, you know, within a reasonable amount of time, I can tell like, oh, okay, this is, going to be, you know, a good match for me or not. And the second part of that is I'm okay with saying like, hey, you know, I think you're great or I think you'll be a great something, something for someone else. But for me, this is not a good match. And I do that now with a lot of calm and ease. I don't, I don't worry about it because I know that whatever their reaction is, that's their reaction. I don't, that's not my stuff. I can't control how they react anyway. And me sacrificing myself or how I feel is not the way to interact with another person anyway, right? Like people have their own autonomy and that's not my business. <laughs> what other people do with their feelings and their emotions and stuff. So, uh, and I'll give you another example. So recently at work, I had to establish a boundary with a coworker and I've always been way better at establishing boundaries with coworkers, with people I work with, I have, my therapist even told me, she was like, you were Johnny on the money when it comes to establishing boundaries with people that you work with. Because I think I just, I view work in a much more like black and white way. And I'm not saying that's the way that you need to be with people because your interpersonal relationships, even with your coworkers, they're not black and white, right? But at work, I was raised to 
be much more black and white in those relationships, partially because I'm a woman, I'm a black woman. I am constantly trying to like mentally navigate all of the perceptions about me. And so it's just a way easier in my experience to just be really black and white with people at work, to just be very, you know, like frank and to establish like standards and boundaries, like from the beginning, it's much less emotional and mental work. And again, I am not trying to be like that with people, you know, interpersonal relationships, but I have given far more (laughs) um, unnecessary leeway and boundary pushing to people that I am friends with or I've been in romantic relationships with to the, you know, way more, way more than they, than the situation (laughs) required, but it worked now. Okay, now it's a hell no. So a couple of months ago, I had to establish a boundary with a woman that I work with who was, um, I think, just flat out trying to sabotage me. And she was also quite disrespectful in what she was trying to call like a correction to something that I had done. And not only did the work not need to be corrected, not saying that I'm perfect because, but you know, but I'm because I'm not. But in this case, the work actually did not need to be corrected, and the tone and the words that she used to attempt to um, communicate her so-called correction, um, they were disrespectful and absolutely across over my boundaries for respect and professionalism in the workplace. And so I immediately and without any hesitation told her, you're not going to speak to me that way. I am making a written report of this situation. And I do suggest that you basically get yourself together because you you've played with the wrong one. Okay. And uh, yeah, so now that lady like refuses to acknowledge my existence and that's okay. But I did follow through (laughs) with everything that I said that I would do, but it was immediate. I didn't even have to think about it. And that kind of confidence with establishing boundaries and things at work, I've now been able to transfer that level of confidence Um, into establishing boundaries and communicating them with people in interpersonal relationships. And I can do that better now because I had I've had time to step back away from participating in unhealthy relationships. I think it's really difficult to like analyze your behavior and get a clear picture of what you're doing or a clear picture of any situation while you're still deeply either still doing the behavior or still very deeply enmeshed in the situation. It always pays off to give yourself, to give yourself some, some, some space, some breathing room away from whatever thing is that's bothering you. So, I hope that this talk was helpful to you. If it was, make sure to share it with someone. Please make sure to like and subscribe and comment. All of those things really do help out the channel. I'm starting to get a little bit of more traction with the channel and I am becoming more consistent. So it would be very helpful if you would like the video, make a comment. It can just be a little heart emoji. It doesn't matter what it is, but I would really appreciate that. So until next time, I am wishing you lots of peace and love on your own journey to self-awareness, and I'll see you in the next video. Namaste.